Undertale. Hi everyone, it's me, and today let's watch this video together. Oh, Undertale. It looks like the dog wants you to culturally analyze his brand new completed strike. However, it doesn't realize YouTube videos need to average 10 minutes in length and its items are too many to talk about for, the, that, for that long. It's clear it has no understanding of YouTube metrics or algorithm. No worry, kid, I got something better for you to analyze. It completely wrecked Twitter for a month or so overseas. You wanna check it out? Game Theory! Game Exchange Counter Shock with Twitch and Twitter. Sorry. Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. Hi Gaijin Goomba. So one month ago, Undertale finally released for the PS4, bringing with it 30 new trophies, a new PS4 theme with an accompanying new song from Toby Fox himself, brand new thematic borders to make up for the aspect ratio difference, and lastly, you can finally play this game officially in Japanese, and it's about time too. With all the yeah. different nods to anime and Japanese in-jokes, I was surprised Undertale didn't release with a Japanese translation. <laughs> but nevertheless, 8.4 took on the role to officially localize the game, but something happened. <laughs> something I don't think anyone expected. During the E3 announcement trailer, one singular word within the official Japanese localization made Undertale fans in Japan completely lose their frickin' minds. <laughs> Oida. I have Oida. never in my life seen such a public outrage at a localization change. For months, Japanese fans voiced their confusion and frustration over this word choice. But why? What the heck does oida mean? And honestly, why should we care? Well, here's the fun thing about Japanese. <laughs> Depending on where you are and who you're talking to, your vocabulary will drastically change. These are called honorifics. Words like honorifics. miru or to look becomes goran ni naru. Kuru or to come becomes irasharu. But no irasharu. honorific is more dictated by status and situations than pronouns. The word for I, for example, can be expressed by saying watashi, watakushi, boku, watakushi, watashi, watakushi, ore, and a couple others. You, on the other hand, can be expressed by saying anata, anta, anata, anta, kimi, or omae. Omae. While textbooks teach the default I and you as watashi and anata, the words they use in actual conversation are completely dictated by not only who you're talking to, but the kind of person that you are. A tough guy would use ore or omai, while a softer guy would say boku and kimi. Finally, if you wanted to be super professional, you could just call yourself watakushi, and you wouldn't even say you. You would just you. refer to people by their last name. Now, going back to the official translation of Undertale, Sans refers to himself as oida. While this oh, yeah. looks like a simple perversion of ore, using the word oida tends to make one sound like a backwoods bumpkin farmer. And, uh, yeah, that's not quite what Sans is about. <laughs> like I said before, the Japanese fandom of Undertale went absolutely nuts pointing out the absurdities of Sans' choice of pronouns. Oh, On one side, oh, yeah. tons of posts were dedicated to Sans' rural rebranding, while the other had Sans conflicting with himself whether to use the more defined ore or casual boku, and in my <laughs> opinion, either boku or ore would have worked. Oida. But nope, we got oida. So in the wake of the oida shock as it was hashtagged in the release of the game, I was incredibly curious to see what else might have changed either with the characters or the story. So today, I'm digging into everything I can. Speech patterns, font choices, vocabulary, literally everything to see how Toby and 8-4 may have changed or complemented these beloved characters in the Japanese localization. Hmm. Let's start with the first thing you meet in the underground, Flowey. From Flowey. the very moment you meet him to the very end when you have the chance to kill him or spare him, Flowey speaks uh. with Boku for I and Kimi for you. Which is very appropriate as Flowey masks his devious plans and murderous intentions with a happy-go-lucky visage. But yeah. on a few occasions, when you really make him mad, Flowey does refer to Frisk as Omai, oh the blunt, oh hard, masculine form of you. Though, strangely, when using these words, it's written in katakana instead of hiragana or kanji. Huh. Now, to explain, hiragana is the alphabet used in Japanese to write domestic Japanese words, such True. as boku and kimi. In mm -hmm. fact, these two words should be written in kanji, the borrowed Chinese True. that makes up the majority of the Japanese nouns and verbs. Should be by kanji, should be, but this is a game, so maybe there's meaning in behind it? But instead, katakana, which is used to write foreign words and loan words, is used. A little more on that later. Next, let's move on to the second monster you meet, Toriel. Now, oh, yeah. in game, Toriel is defined by two oh, yeah. very important characteristics her properness as royalty, and her feminine kindness as a mother. And both mm -hmm. of these characteristics are reflected in her Japanese speaking very, very well. 
Tutorial oftentimes uses a very special particle that denotes feminine speaking, wa. Though only wa. really used by older generations, also fitting for Toriel, wa is used at the end of a sentence to express a soft emotion into the context of the sentence, making it very feminine. Wa can also be used by transgender and homosexual men to sound more ladylike. Um, I've got to pause this video and just admit that this... I'm very glad that, um... Uh, Gachin Kumba actually took the effort and mentioned a lot of these kind of things that non-Japanese speakers, heck, even if I understand Japanese, I will not be able to recognize this. I'm glad that he actually took the effort and mentioned it. Thank you so much. Overall, Wa is just soft, gentle, and feminine. Very fitting for Torio. The other form of speech that expresses Toriel's regality comes from the honorific prefix O. Adding O to the beginning of nouns and some verbs gives the word an honored tone to it. Mm -hmm. This prefix is often used by employees to customers or hosts to guests. It's like saying that ni san, ni chan, o ni san, o ni chan. And when Toriel shows Friska the room for the first time, she adds the prefix of O to the core word for room, heya, becoming o heya. Overall, just great speech choice for a beloved character in my opinion. Now on the flip side, Toriel's husband King Asgore lacks a lot of that proper tone that Toriel has throughout the game. Mostly because when you finally meet him, you completely catch him off guard. But honestly, I expected textbook speech from Asgore like the polite mas des forms used at the end of sentences. Mas but true to the character, Asgore's Japanese speech lacked formality. I know that might not seem like much, but it's a small detail that I think remains loyal to Asgore's original character. Next, let's move on to the captain of Asgore's guard, Undyne. In the beginning, Undyne spares no expense in breaking out the harshest of harsh talk. When referring to Frisk, Undyne uses Kisama. What once was a formal word a long time ago, now is what you would yell at someone before throwing a punch at him. Uh, yeah, so if you're angry and you find someone, it's like, Kisama! So, something like that. So, yeah, appropriate. I'm sorry. Yet, when referring to herself, she uses the standardized watashi instead of the hard ore. This comes from her position as a member of the Royal Guard instead of a delinquent who uses the term ore. Her speech patterns reflect the honor she has with her position, but also her disdain for humans like Frisk. Heck, even when Undyne becomes your friend, she's still calling you Kisame no Mae. <laughs> Moving on, let's get into Alphys, the head royal scientist. Oh. Now, you'd think being the series' main staple otaku slash weeb, Alphys would also have otaku speech patterns in Japanese, right? Whether it be choice vocabulary or using the particle nyan at the end of sentences. Yendere, sundere. Yeah, you hardcore yeah. otaku know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay! Mm, yeah, it was a trap and I fell for it. <laughs> yeah! Okay, moving on. But surprisingly enough, in all the raw footage I saw, Alphys didn't once break into any nerd speech patterns. In huh. fact, she's pretty normalized. Not proper textbook grammar or harsh informal tone, just normal everyday Japanese. And I had the same surprise with Metaton as well. I mean, standard Metaton constantly changes his speech patterns based on the roles that he's playing. Whether it be a show host, a news anchor, or an actor. But I was really curious to see how Metaton EX would talk. Remember that feminine particle wa? I'll be honest, I kinda expected it wah. out of post-transformation Metaton given his design and demeanor. But nope, he just kept no. using Boku and Kimi. Which granted is appropriate given the fact that Metaton is a softer spoken character, but also considering how, uh, well, flamboyant he is, I was super surprised he didn't use wa. Guess Metaton wah. is more Ikemen than I give him credit for. <laughs> All right, let's get into my two favorites of the game, Sans and Papyrus. Ooh, the favorite Sans and Papyrus. Let's start. After the Oida shock fiasco, I was dying to see what else 84 did with Sans, but to their credit, I think they pretty much nailed the spirit of Sans in Japanese. Boku ore ola. <laughs> Just a couple of things that seem pretty random. For starters, playing along with the font joke, Sans's Japanese font has an Adobe fan Haiti thing going on, making his font chubby and goofy. But when he's got his serious face on, his font goes into an MS Mincho, a default for Chinese and Japanese, which plays well into the English counterpart. Mm -hmm. However, something I was still conflicted with was Sans' use of pronouns. 
We've already covered how bizarre it seems for Sans to call himself Oida, but when it comes to you pronouns, he actually uses Anta, a shortened, more familiar, and far more rude way of saying you. Instead of saying, um, Anta, you say Anta. Uh, why did you stop in, stop off saying Anata instead of uh, why? It's just a bit slightly rude. I mean, it's impolite, disrespectful. It's not Kisama levels of bad, but it's just really condescending to use. <laughs> but then it kind of hit me. Oida? Anta? This isn't about Sans being a bumpkin or a smug jerk. This is just Sans not giving a flip about how others see it, <laughs> and what could possibly be more Sans than that? So you know what? <laughs> Bring on the Oida. It makes sense as far as I'm concerned. But let's move on to the best boy Papyrus because my god, I absolutely love what 8-4 oh, did with it. True, First of all, Papyrus is the only monster I've seen whose text reads in the old-fashioned Japanese style of Tategaki. Literally meaning vertical writing, Tategaki was, like many other things, inspired by the traditional Chinese writing system with mm. characters being written from top to down and right to left. It's very easy because bamboo stick. <laughs> It was only during the Meiji period and the massive influx of foreign influence did Japan There's adopt the right Western left to right reading they dubbed Yokogaki, or horizontal writing. But I gotta ask, why? What does ancient writing techniques have to do with papyrus? I mean, if we're going with the font gag, the papyrus font was created in 1982, so the age joke doesn't really mesh well, right? Wrong. Because papyrus in itself was created to look antique. Though a bit overused at this point, Papyrus was utilized for establishments that wanted to have a rustic or antique feel to them. Oh. Churches, coffee shops, anything that denotes an ancient style often uses Papyrus due to its aged appearance. So yeah, in retrospect, Papyrus using an extremely old form of Japanese writing absolutely makes sense. So it's like an illusion, it gives the impression of being something else, interesting but that's just for starters. <gasps> In true Papyrus fashion, he constantly refers to Frisk as Ningen, or human, Ningen. but also dropping Kisama every once in a while. Keeping the same tone that Undyne does, but doing so more ironically as he continues to use Kisama even after dating Frisk. But the true kicker here is how Papyrus refers to himself as Oresama. Oresama. This freaking kills me. I'm a lot. Because Oresama is one of the most uncouth things you can refer to yourself as, yet is perfect for Papyrus. As we've established, Ore is the hard boy's way of saying I, but Sama is a suffix used to greatly honor someone else, like hmm. a lord or a customer or your boss. You have to be really, really into your own hype to call yourself Sama. But seeing as our Skeleton Boy refers to himself as the Great Papyrus constantly, this choice of pronoun couldn't be any more appropriate. <laughs> Finally, we come to Kara. Yes, it is pronounced Kara if 84's official localization has anything to do with it. Oh, this is where Kara. the speech patterns in Undertale really, Kara. really get weird. Not because Ooh. they're irregular, but because they're standardized. Kara is the only character in the game to use correct combinations of katakana, hiragana, and kanji when speaking. By and large, the rest of the characters almost exclusively use hiragana in their speech with some katakana, even kanji, randomly thrown in. But Kara is the only one who uses correct textbook writing. With the limited information we have about Kara in general, it's hard to glean what this may mean, but this correct form of speech may be what denotes the difference between monster and human. And though I didn't see much else going on with that differentiation, maybe there's more to it than I found. True. Either way, I absolutely love what 8-4 and Toby did with the official True. localization so I really like it too. It takes a reference for the language in the games as well, so that people can understand it better. It not only reinforces the rich independent attributes of the characters, but also builds on them with unique Japanese concepts and makes those attributes stronger. Goomba, put it on the to-do list! Good it's not Japanese culture! Do something different, you weeaboo! I... but... <sighs> Oh, oh my god! Just you wait, Matt. Just I'll wait. cover it. <laughs> oh. uh, but until then, everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba signing out. Oh my god! <laughs> I really like it that Matt Pat just that like, boom at the ending of the video. Oh, that's super OP! Oh my god! Ah! 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you find this video very interesting and exciting to watch. For me, I find it very enjoyable and entertaining as well. Thank you. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have anything to share about. Don't forget to follow my channel and I sincerely appreciate all of, all of you for your encouraging and support for me. Thank you so much. And yeah, but hey, that's just a game. A game exchange. Culture shock. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.